Today, I want to teach you an important critical listening skill. My name is Joe Gilder. Let's listen for the whistle. What does that mean? Okay, so forget I said that for a second and take a listen to these drum tracks. This is just raw drum tracks recorded here in my studio. Not the best recording in the world, but just what stands out to you as you listen to this? Okay, do you have an answer yet? Let me play it again. This time, let me just play the overhead and the room tracks just to hone in on what I'm talking about here. All right, do you have it? If so, congratulations. If not, I'm going to help you out again and make this even more obvious. Let me put... Uh, right now there's no plugins on here. Let me put an EQ on just the drum bus and I'm going to put the EQ off camera. Uh, I'm going to help you with the thing you're supposed to be hearing, but you're not. Okay, here we go. All right. Now that your dog has run into the room wondering what in the world you're doing, this is what I want to talk about. So this is, this, I, haven't, I haven't gotten to the bottom of exactly what's happening with this, but I've noticed it, and I've noticed it in a couple of different of my projects. It recorded and mixed in different rooms. So I've been in this room for a couple of years, but a project I did in, if you remember a few years back when I was in, it looked kind of like more like a basement studio. There were windows along the side. Um, and there were like stairs back here. I did a whole project in there and I had this same problem uh, or the same opportunity, let's call it, present itself, but it's most prominent on these drum tracks and it's this whistling frequency. So let me show you. So I've, I've zoomed in on it here, obviously, and I've boosted it. It's around, it's just under 3K, so 2.89 or so. Let's actually hone in a little bit more and find exactly what that frequency is. Yeah, it's right at 2.9. And listen to what happens when I just take this EQ that I've got. And you can do this with dynamic EQ, but since it's so consistent, just a regular old notch filter, we call it, which is taking our EQ, pulling it down, and making sure the width or the Q setting is as high as it'll go. Listen to what happens to the sound of these drums when I pull that down. With that one EQ move, to my ear, nothing changed in the drum sound except that whistle went away. We're taking just a very specific sliver of frequencies away, and the rest of it is pretty much untouched. But now listen to what happens when I turn this EQ band on and off. Now you're not going to be able to do anything but hear that sound. Okay, here we go. just bonkers to me. And if we solo it, obviously it hurts. So at best I can guess, there's a resonance and the two rooms I recorded these drums in have a specific resonance that is just getting amplified. And at the point where the microphone was, it got picked up. Could be the microphone that had the same overhead mics. Maybe they've got something in them or maybe I bonked them in their side. I don't know. Could be any number of things. Could be the cymbals he's playing. They resonate at that frequency. Knowing the why doesn't really matter because if you do a lot of mixing and mix a lot of tracks that uh, you didn't record or even if you did record them, knowing how it happened is somewhat helpful to maybe try to prevent it again in the future. Uh, but knowing how to fix it is more important. And here, it was as simple as what we call a notch filter took that thing away. So now if we go back to our entire drum mix and listen to it without that EQ, now all you're going to hear is, oh man, listen to that, that whistle. Now, Imagine yourself seven minutes ago listening to the intro of this video or however long ago it was. You were saying you were listening to the drums and perhaps you were saying, mm, I don't know what I hear. Maybe the cymbals are too loud. Maybe the snare is too. You probably had a lot of ideas. But now if you go back and do that again, you're going to be like, oh, I hear that whistle that. 
Can't quite whistle that high. That frequency is almost all you hear now. So you can imagine now, if I were to add bus compression or any other number of things, especially something involving compression to this, it's only going to make that whistling sound louder because compression takes those little sounds. Compression exposes our flaws a lot of times, and so that's going to just come out even more. So we may be thinking, something's wrong with these drums, or I'm just going to turn the cymbals down, but then the whole mix sounds dark because the cymbals are too quiet. Then you turn them back up, and it's there's this annoying thing you couldn't put your finger on, that was it. Now, this kind of thing, this kind of whistling frequency certainly shows up in drums because they're like, you know, a a cymbal has a certain sound and it doesn't change, right? It's a certain group of frequencies that doesn't change throughout the song, unlike a guitar that changes pitch all the time. But there, you'll see this, if you start to look for this and notice it, you'll see this show up in a lot of places, especially vocals. I find when a singer sings, especially singing louder, and like E sounds like E, E, that kind of nasally thing you hear that kind of comes through, through that sound as well. So you'll start to spot it specifically, I find in the two to three key, two to three K range, closer to three, there's a lot of times if something's annoying you, just check to see if something's resonating there and pull it down and you'll find it smooths it out wonderfully. Now, the cautionary the cautionary tale here is don't go boosting all frequencies and trying to find things that annoy you uh, because you can find them anywhere, right? Any frequency boosted a ton will annoy you. The only reason I boosted this was to find the thing I was already hearing. So that's the key point here is get to a point where you can hear these problems uh, without having to use EQ to assist you, then you can use EQ to go find it real quick and pull it down and move on with your life. It makes mixing so much more fun and a lot faster because you're able to say, oh, listen to those drums. Oh, there's a ringing there. Oh, it's just in the overheads. Oh, here's the frequency. Oh, it's gone. Let's move on with our lives. It's a pretty glorious way to live, and sometimes it honestly kind of feels like a superpower. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.